the monster train brings you questions, and the monster explain gives you answers. Hey there, I am Gavel Guide, and today we're going to try to answer two very important questions about Monster Train's lore. The first, what is the Bone Shaker? And the second, who is Herzal? Let's begin with that first question. What is the Monster Train? But to answer that, we're going to need to go back a bit in the setting's history. Monster Train is set in an original and very unique take on Hell. During a point of this Hell's history, it was a place of chaos and danger, until one man took it upon himself to try and change things. He unified not just the Nine Rings of Hell into an uneasy order, but Heaven and Earth with it. The Bone Shaker is a railway that runs through all three worlds, connecting them in literal and symbolic unity. The Bone Shaker is obviously an important train, and this is complemented with a number of very interesting features. It's got security guard robots, trick hallways, moving staircases, damaging steam vents, it's got a trap chute, it's got a pulley claw, it's even got an improved firebox. The pyre is a very important but somewhat vaguely defined aspect of Monster Train's hell. The Forever Flame artifact briefly mentions the complete and consuming warmth of the pyre. The Blood for Blood artifact mentions that the use of these pyre artifacts was part of what led to the creation of the Covenant. And the flavor text for the last shard of the pyre describes it as one shard still burning, and that it is their last hope to reignite the flames of hell. Pyre seems to be the fire and brimstone that hell is typically associated with. It is even especially associated with the time in hell's history when there was widespread chaos and disaster. However, when it comes to our relationship with the monster train, there is one very important component I have glossed over, and that is the last shard of the pyre. Pyrestone is a sort of way to transfer the pyre into a physical form by infusing it into a gem. If we look at the flavor text for Pyrestone housing, we can see Herzl remarking on this process. My discovery of the creation of Pyrestones, gemstones infused with the flames of the pyre, was monumental in enhancing the strength of Hell's forces and marked a turning point in the war against heaven. That victory was short-lived, however, as the design was stolen and copied shortly thereafter. This establishes not only that Pyre is a big source of Hell's power, and that it can be made more potent by infusing it into these gems, it is also the first in a pattern you will soon see of Heaven stealing Herzl's ideas. This seems to suggest that not only is Pyre a sort of power source for Hell, but that infusing it into these gems has increased its efficiency. This is not something that is given a lot of detail in the lore, at least not as far as I know. But Pyre and Pyre Stones are a very fundamentally important aspect of how Hell functions. That much is clear. So that about covers the first question. What is the Monster Train? It is a symbol of the peace and unity that was meant to exist between Heaven, Hell, and Earth until Heaven decided to invade Hell and start a war. It's a train with many tricks and traps and gadgets to fight off intruders or just aid its users. And it's a train containing the last shard of the Pyre Stone, the only remaining flames of Hell's Fire, and the only way to restore peace as we know it. But all throughout this, I keep mentioning the man in the second question. Herzl. The person who built the monster train. The person who created Pyre Stones. The person who sought to create this unity in the first place. The monster train is a cool vehicle, but Herzl is an extraordinarily fascinating person. If we're going to talk about who Herzl is, I think the best place to start is with the Hammered Chestplates artifact. Seraph and I pursued the Covenant to quell the unrest and the armor persisted across centuries. It has proven useful in this last fight. Much of the specifics of Herzl's history are intentionally left vague, but this tells us just about everything we need to know about him. When he lives in a dangerous and horrible area, he does what he can to make people more safe. Additionally, it tells us that he was able to work together with Seraph, the leader of Heaven, to pursue the Covenant that brought peace, at least for a little while. More than anything, it tells us that Herzl is not ordinary. He is always striving to do good things, and he seems capable of achieving them. Both of these facts are crucial to telling his story from here on out. 
there is one thing I want to address before moving on much further, and that is one of the most important aspects of Herzl's character. That being that he wrote all of the flavor text in the game. This is not only confirmed by the developers, it is readily apparent if you know where to look. Uh, the easiest way is to look at the journal page, which identifies the journal as belonging to Herzl, and is implied to be the source of all the information you are reading. There is one other very important fact about Herzl, and as far as I can tell, this is only known because it has been confirmed by the developers. I can't find any evidence of this in-game other than some things that just don't add up in general. But Herzl is a Titan. Monster Train has a handful of very powerful beings known as Titans, however, very little is known about them, so I'll be discussing them individually as they become relevant. Herzl is suggested to be in Hell for quite a long time before pursuing the Covenant. However, it doesn't seem that he did much of importance during this time. As far as I can tell, Herzl isn't that important of a figure in Hell's history until he starts to pursue the Covenant, at which point he accomplishes a number of extraordinary things. The text of the first Hell Pact does a good job summarizing what Herzl went through. Uniting the Rings of Hell to construct the rail was no easy task. But after years of work, I was finally able to achieve what was once thought impossible by having the clans from each ring all agree to this pact. Herzl was not alone, of course. Not only is he implied to have a friendship with Tethys and, in a much shakier sense, with Flicker, as well as having varying amounts of respect from both Heavens and Hell's leaders. However, two figures in particular seem especially entwined with Herzl. These characters are Fel, the clipped boss of level 6, and Hef, the blacksmith. Fel's description cuts right to the heart of her relation to Herzl. Once my closest ally, this clipped legend has been able to create new wings out of the light that Heaven uses. I admire her ingenuity, but I'll never be able to forgive her for abandoning the two of us. This relationship is expanded on in a few other pieces of text. Both the abandoned stave... I was really expecting to see the word staff there, and don't want to re-record that line and even the final embers of the pyre were given to Herzl by Fel when she left to fight for heaven. And this is all that's explicitly said about Fel. The text for Ember even specifically states, that's all I have to say about Fel. However, I believe there is one other time the flavor text mentions her, if not by name. The flavor text for Light's gift reads, Our time together was brief, but our bond was unbreakable. However, when the covenant was broken, my hope for what was unbreakable was shattered as well. I keep her gift close to my heart to remember what we had and what was lost. Fel is repeatedly accused of leaving or abandoning Herzl elsewhere in the text. It seems pretty clear that Fel was more than a steadfast ally. They were lovers. And at some point, their love led to a child. We can find the identity of this child by looking at the frozen nostalgia artifact. This is a locket that once belonged to Herzl, with a description that sounds very much like a father offering advice. The picture in the locket, low res though it is, is undeniably Hef the blacksmith. However, this trinket does not make its way to your hands without bad news. The only way to acquire frozen nostalgia is by encountering Herzl's final resting place. Witness the false prophet, forger of the rail and covenant, now damned and broken. It's not clear when he was captured, or why this was chosen as his fate, but this is Herzl the titan that forged the covenant and united the realms. Encountering this offers you a choice between three artifacts. His hope for the future in the form of frozen nostalgia, his dedication to peace and unity as the rail forger's hammer, or his knowledge and wisdom manifesting very literally as the history of the world. Even well beyond his final moments, Herzl is fighting for the world he believes in. But there is one final experience to discuss before we close this episode out, something that happened even before Herzl died. Herzl was influenced by strange and ancient beings called Exiles. He only received a few vague visions before his death, but from them we can gather a few important details. Each clan of Hell seems to spring from some sort of original being that made a sacrifice to give their clan life and to give Hell in general a future. However, each exile is very different, and explaining just one would require discussing the clan they're related to in even more detail just to contextualize it, and we don't really have time for that here. 
Thankfully, we'll have more than enough time to learn about the exile of the Hellhorned on the next episode of Monster Explain. Thank you for listening.